question. I don't know. I think I like the the wrestling bear story the best. Um, and I, uh, uh, you gotta understand, back in those days, in those little towns, going down the river, some of them were only like 500 population, just ranchers and and loggers and whatnot. So there would be guys that come through the town. Uh, some one guy had come through once or twice a month, and he had a projector, and he'd show a film, and he'd put up some flyers, you know, two or three days at a time, and I think see uh, see those movies, and and there was guys that would come through with like magic acts, you know, sleight of hand kind of things, and. And uh, there would be uh, one guy came through at least once, once a year, with a boxer or two, and you had to pay five hundred dollars or five dollars to get in the ring with this guy. And if you could stay three rounds, uh, you'd win twenty-five dollars. And I was never, I never did uh, get in on that. And I was not that good a boxer, but, so that just gives you an idea of the guys that come through town trying to give you some entertainment. And this one guy came through and he had a couple of trailers with uh, some bears and just, run-of-the-mill female brown bears and but he had and it's kind of sad now that I look back but he had defanged them taken all their teeth out and removed their claws and uh, apparently he trained them but and all you had to do you could pay 50 cents and if you could get that bear off of his feet and on his back, uh, you could win five dollars. And I spent about five dollars that night <laughs> at fifty cents a whack. But those bears, you know, I had it all planned out, and I was gonna get down low and pick him straight up and throw him, but. I don't care where you picked him up, he just stretched and stretched and stretched. And I couldn't, I wasn't tall enough. And I'd get back and take a run at him and he'd sidestep. The guy uh, had trained him really well. But something a lot of people don't realize, and I didn't think about it till I got home, but I started coming in the house and mom smelled me. And, and of course that slobber where he had it she'd had her mouth on my arms and stuff and those bears stink to high heaven their Musky. fur is oily kind of she made me take my clothes off out in the back step before she'd let me in the house <laughs> I bet that was an adrenaline rush having some bear chick gnawing on your arm even though it didn't have any teeth. Yeah, I mean, I watched him for a while. I watched some of the bigger guys, but that was the time in my life when I was undefeated in wrestling. Mm. And I thought, sure, I could take him down. But I didn't. I think I got in the ring with him eight or ten times. Oh, I just wanted to know what was it like when the, the with the day that you left for the Navy, the last day you were home with your family? I wasn't with my family. I, uh, I had gone, I was living in Boise. Mm -hmm. When I turned 17, I, uh, joined the Navy. Yeah. Well, I had to drive down to uh, Hygen. I had to drive down to, to Canyon City where Mom was 
uh, working in a restaurant mm -hmm. and have her sign a release mm -hmm. that I could go in the Navy when I was 17. And, uh, and she signed it? Oh yeah. And then I drove back to Boise and uh, and then they uh, they flew us <coughs> to Salt Lake City, I believe, and swore us in there and then flew to San Diego for uh, uh, for boot camp. So your mom wasn't a crying mess? What about your dad, your brother and sister? I don't know. I didn't know. I was just thinking about me at the time. Seventeen. They were cowboys. Just. Well, everybody, all young men went into the military back then. That was just what you did. And nowadays, in the church, young men go on missions and they leave boys and come back men. Back in those days, the whole country, they went into the military for at least two years, and it was just, it's just what you did. I got in just after the Korean War. <clears throat> that had pretty well settled down. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends had been there, and had horrible stories. And, uh, and I got out in August of 61, and we'd already sent some detachments to Laos and a few places in the jungle. Mm -hmm. uh, I hadn't gone on any of them. I was discharged to uh, Treasure Island in 61, and, and they never called me back for Vietnam. Where did so you spend most of your time? In the service? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Guam, Canton Island. Palau, uh, Adak, Kodiak, and my favorite duty station was we uh, at the Eighth Winter Olympics in Squaw Valley, mm -hmm. just outside of Truckee and Reno there. And I went on a. There was 28 of us that went up there and and equipment hauled in. We built the largest compacted ice parking lot in the world. Big deal. <laughs> <laughs> but they had been experimenting with this equipment down in the, in the Antarctic, uh, you know, to, for uh, runways and stuff like that. And, uh, and we used uh, we used their system to uh, build that parking lot, and that was a that was a good good duty. We we stayed in the they closed the school down for the Olympics. We stayed in the, the grade school, put our cots out there, and showers in the shower. Mm -hmm. We're about that high, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was uh, that was a fun. You got tips and stuff when you were doing that too, right? Oh yeah, I just we had those little snow cats, and at night if we weren't uh, actually, you know, we had the cars all full. We parked over eleven thousand cars there in Squaw Valley, and. Uh, Drive up by the the uh, bear pen, and and some old ladies would be stumbling out, and put them in that snow cat. I got as high as a fifty dollar tip one night. <laughs> she said, she said, where are you from? I said, Oregon. She said, you're not. She said, you're from. Kentucky, I can tell. <laughs> I finally admitted that I was from Kentucky. <laughs> Didn't you have a, a mom that was a Harley in your living room? Uh, when I was in LA, that's before I met mom. Mm -hmm. 
I want to hear some of those Hell's Angels stories. It wasn't Hell's Angels, it was... Just a Philly. Oh, oh, T-T-B. T-T-B. Open oh, T-T-B. Throttle. Full, full, full throttle, tilted bottle. <laughs> Open throttle, tilted bottle. O-T-T-B. But we did take no, a few rides TV. with the... Uh, uh, and kids don't get crazy about this, but... Uh, of the motorcycle clubs, organizations, <laughs> or games. Grandpa was in a game. A motorcycle uh, game. A motorcycle club. Remember West Side Story? <laughs> kind of like that. They dance. Hardcore. We took a few <laughs> rides <laughs> with uh, the slaves and the angels. And. Uh, It just. What did they call you? What was your name? Preacher. <laughs> preacher or creature? Preacher. preacher. Oh, I thought it was creature. No, preacher. <laughs> Why did they call you preacher? Because you're the best storyteller. Well, I uh, I never ever lost my testimony. Even sometimes in my life when I was a rascal, I always knew where my blessings came from and was constantly apologizing and you never swore no <laughs> I'd say dang it once in a while <laughs> <laughs> and you never lied you never uh, took the Lord's name in vain no. <laughs> but, uh, we had uh, you know we had uh, I remember uh, one night we were down near uh, Soto Street in East L.A. Uh, oh, what was the name of that? It's just uh, Alvera. Alvera. Alvera, I think that was it. And anyway, it was just kind of a place where people would go when you didn't have something better to do. Uh, Cruising Mill Street. <clears throat> Over in, yeah, by the airport. And that's and the yeah. Mexican section. Yeah, and, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Alvaro Street. We used to bring all our yeah, people who came into town. We used yeah. to bring them down there. Like a Disney yeah, I mean, they had like glass blowers mm-hmm. and you could buy serapes. And, yeah, it was a nice place. And if you wanted to. Uh, Wrestle around with somebody, you could always find somebody to wrestle with. Oh my god. uh, It was, uh, anyway, we were down there and it got late at night. I was with about 40 40 guys with with the angels and and anyway, it was a, an amazing thing uh, to me at the time. I had uh, my wiring had burnt, lost my headlights, and and I don't know, my mag wasn't working. And of course, back in those days, you you didn't have electric starters and that kind of stuff. But and. Uh, and they were trying to get us to hook up with them. Our little outfit, we only had six or eight of us. But uh, they just, it was late at night and there was a mess of us and these guys came over and started pulling wiring out of their bike jackets and tools and uh, you know, you'd be amazed at how Many pockets there is in in a real in a real bike jacket, and uh, they had me in minutes. They had me up and running again. I was really impressed. But we uh, but we'd been in one place too long, and people started showing up. Uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so we, uh, everybody, I mean, everybody disappeared in just seconds. And, uh, and that particular night, a good friend of mine, uh, 
angel. We got, I saw him go, but we turned down, you know, the LA River is just kind of like a big concrete uh, viaduct. Matter of fact, uh, in that movie that you kids like so much. Yeah, yeah, that's the LA River. <clears throat> and anyway, we hit with uh, Angel and I and Bud turned down that street and they were hot after us. I got off in an alley and I looked, looked back and Angel had come right past me and there's a guardrail to keep you from going into the river. He laid his bike down <laughs> and went right under that guardrail right down to the L.A. River. On purpose? Well, he didn't know, you know, we didn't know it was a dead end. Yeah. But he had to lay it down or he just killed him for sure. But uh, all he got out was a broken leg. And that was funny, watching him <laughs> ride with one broken leg. <laughs> Somebody else would start it for him. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, when we were at a restaurant or something, we'd all have our bikes backed into the curb. And no matter how many there was, you know, 10, 40 of us, uh, everybody get cranked up. Of course, like I mentioned before, we didn't have starters back then. You had to build your compression and get started and some of those little Harleys were really hard to get started unless you had them really tuned. And anyway, once you got started, you held your hand up. So everybody would wait for the last guy to have his hand up. And uh, Frenchie had <laughs> had too much coffee or something. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was uh, tired. <laughs> and uh, he had his hand up. We all started putting away. We weren't running from anybody. We just all started putting away. And, and I looked back and there was Frenchy laying on his side, <laughs> shifting. <laughs> He didn't want to shut it off. No, he, he, he didn't. He didn't know straight up. Yeah, that that was funny. Is that the same place you guys to go get blown sandwiches? Yeah. They said, well, you guys blown sandwiches. Every Wednesday they had free bologna sandwiches there. Why? Oh, it was called the Mad Pad, and it was just where a lot of people hung out, and that's the way they got in. It was probably a slow night for them. Probably oh, Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so everybody at least got one good meal during yeah. the week? Yeah. And uh, the bread was, was fresh, but no mustard or mayonnaise or anything, but... Right. Brought a lot of people in. Then they bought other stuff while they were there <laughs> yeah. to go along with their bologna. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably ladies' night. <laughs> this is about a very, very, very special person in, uh, in a lot of people's lives, and so I uh, enjoy it. <laughs> Yes. 
my strength right there Then I lost the fight to obey Thank you very much.